Whether you're an admirer or a critic of News Corp, um, I think our, their success is undeniable. The phenomenal growth of the company over the past 60 years has been achieved by sticking to a, a pretty clear, pretty simple strategy. Invest in compelling information and entertainment, which will attract and engage mass audiences, and then work out how to monetize those audiences. In Australia, when it comes to breaking stories, holding our governments and public institutions to account, newspapers are by far the most important medium. Newspaper publishers like news talk about setting the news agenda each morning. And when you think about it, that's more than empty rhetoric, it's actually true. If you want to know what's going on in this country, to measure the pulse of the nation, and then get background, analysis, and opinion on the issue of the day, newspapers are the place to go. The advent of digital has brought newspapers millions more readers. And this number is increasing rapidly as more people use mobile phones and tablets to access our content. For newspaper publishers, this represents a huge opportunity. As News Limited's Chairman and Chief Executive, John Hardikin, said in a speech last year, digital devices give newspaper publishers the opportunity to reach readers from the moment they wake up to the moment they go to sleep. Social media relies almost exclusively on traditional media to start the social conversation. Look at some research, the Pew Institute, the Pew Research 2010 New Media, Old Media Report, which concentrated on US media, but it found that bloggers still rely on traditional media for their information. Digital versions of US newspapers and broadcast networks accounted for 75% of all items linked to by blogs. International media, such as the BBC and The Guardian, accounted for a further 24%, which means web-only sites did not make up even 1% of the links. Let me just say that again. Over 99% of links from blogs originated from traditional sources. And you look at the explosion in traffic News Limited gets from Facebook, um, it, which tells us that when people want to inform their friends about something, it's the mainstream media that they're linking to. So content's not the problem, traffic's not the problem, the challenge is converting that audience into income. In the digital world, monetization takes four real forms. There's subscription income, there's display advertising, classified advertising, and transactional revenues. As far as classified advertising and transactional revenues go, news is in pretty good shape which leaves us with display revenue and subscription revenue. As you all know, the Australian online display category is growing pretty quickly and news is a major player. Since we launched News Digital Media in 2006, we have very comfortably outpaced the market, growing both revenue and share of the top five publishers. In fact, with the explosive growth, growth of tablets over the next five to 10 years, we see enormous possibilities for display advertising on our apps. Engagement levels with our news apps are high, and the tablet experience combines the best of newspapers and the web, so, so creating a perfect environment for advertisers. And on this point, let me be very, very clear. Display revenue is, and will remain, a very, very important part of our overall revenue mix, and we're not going to do anything to jeopardise that revenue. But we also believe when it comes to online, the newspaper industry has been, let's say, a little bit forgetful about a revenue stream that served a lot of media companies, and in fact most products, pretty well. The novel idea of actually getting people to pay for something that you produce. Why pay for something I can get for free? Is the commonly asked question. A lot of the Australian's content is unique and of real value to its readers. And this makes it the country's best and most influential news brand. Which is why asking people to pay something for it is a very reasonable and very logical next step. But there's an important point to make here. We're creating a value proposition for the Australian in a digital world. But we believe it is important to give large audiences access to some of that content. Which is why when we launch digital subscriptions, we'll be using the freemium model. 
The freemium model, which uses a mixture of free and paid for content, has been used very successful by the Wall Street Journal. The free content is important to drive large audiences to the site and leading them to the premium content. It also allows us to continue to sell advertising to a mass market. There's no set rule about how much will be free. It'll be up to the editor of each section. But it's likely that breaking news, wire stories, broad interest stories, general blogs, and basic stock market data will be free. But only our subscribers will be able to access the large amounts of unique content in our key verticals, national affairs, business, media, higher education, IT, and so on. Our expectation is that the freemium model will give us the best of both worlds. We'll retain most of our traffic and display revenue that comes with it, and we'll have a new subscription income and a very valuable database of highly engaged readers. To coincide with the launch, we'll be unveiling a redesigned website which will have many new features, simplified navigation and enhanced functionality. We'll also be launching a brand new M site. For the time being, we'll keep our existing iPad app as it is. Our intention is to launch in October this year, once we have finished testing all the new technology involved in building subscription systems and, and so on. A digital subscription to The Australian will cost just $2.95 per week. And this will give you access to the entire website, to our iPad and Android apps, and to the M site. One subscription, one login across all platforms, and no hassles. We'll also have two print plus digital packages. New six-day print subscribers will get print and digital access for just $7.95 a week, just a dollar more than the current print standalone price. And the Weekend Australian plus digital, which we expect to be a very popular package, will be only $4.50 a week. If you're an existing six-day print subscriber, you'll receive complimentary access to our digital packages. For less than the price of one decaf skinny soy latte, you will get access to the country's best journalism across online, tablet and mobile for a whole week. After a lot of research and market testing, we're pretty confident of success. We're also encouraged by the success of our, of our other sister companies around the world and their digital launches, in particular the Wall Street Journal and the Times and the Sunday Times in London. After six months, the Times now has 79,000 digital subscribers and the number is growing every day. The rise in digital subscribers is more than offsetting declines in print circulation. That is, the Times is actually growing its overall circulation numbers. And here's the important bit. They are making more money from their 79,000 digital subscribers than they did from the 20 million unique browsers they used to have. Initially we're targeting the ones we call the migrators that have come out of the research. These are the people that love and buy newspapers. They love our content, the breadth and depth of our coverage, and the expertise of our journalists. But lifestyle pressures mean they don't get to read a printed newspaper as often as they used to, as often as they would like. So a digital offering is perfect for them. Being subscribers, we will know a lot about them. Who they are, where they live, their likes and dislikes, interests and habits. And the experience of the Times in London suggests that the subscription environment is incredibly attractive to advertisers. The Times has done extensive research into subscriber attitudes about their websites. The feedback is overwhelmingly positive. Subscribers, having paid for the privilege of joining, feel they are with like-minded people, part of a community, not just an audience. And they identify more strongly with the brand. It feels, they say, like being part of a club. Subscribers feel they're in a premium environment and the content has been tailored for them. And what's more, they're more receptive to advertisements. And this has huge implications for advertisers. The perception of the premium environment means that increased value is given to products within it. Subscribers do expect ads to be relevant to them, and of a certain standard. But when you advertise products 
that are aligned with the needs of this audience, the Times found that message and brand recall increases by up to 20%. So in summary, digital subscribers are more engaged with the content and give increased value to products placed alongside that content. And we think that's an attractive proposition for any brand. But don't take it from me. Take it from one of your industry leaders. When Andrew Swinand was president of global operations for Starcom MediaVest, he said, and I quote, advertising is about adjacency. I'm paying for an engaged audience, and if that audience is willing to pay, that demonstrates just how engaged they are.